the tips and tricks of arthroscopic ACL reconstruction. So we had covered the graft harvesting concepts and the almost uh, all the concepts of uh, fixations in the femoral side, which is the most important one. So the, my topic is going to cover just tips and tricks in arthroscopic ACL reconstruction it means how to get good functional outcome after arthroscopic ACL reconstruction. So the most important is selection of the patient. So especially when you receive a patient in an ACL reconstruction in acute situation, we don't know which patient to operate, which patient is concerned. So some patients, if the middle-aged patients comes with only pain, but no instability, I think better still, these patients can be treated conservatively. If they don't have instability, if you do an ACL reconstruction, sometimes patients may not be happy. Uh, happy. So the absolute indication is instability, at least once or twice after the uh, uh, fall or the, uh, after, the, uh, after the injury, if he has got an instability, then that's an indication. The other indication is that the patient is associated with uh, ligament injuries like a meniscus or collateral ligament injuries or the cartilage injuries. These are the patients required ACL reconstruction along with addressing the uh, uh, ligament injuries. The chronic cases make sure that whenever the patient comes after a long time of ACL injury, sometimes patients come with a lot of quadriceps wasting, they will say that I have instability. But if you, uh, if you put a leading question, then most of them they'll have a just uh, 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 falling forward uh, kind of uh, instability because of the quadriceps weakness. So that patients, you have to be very careful that if you rehabilitate them very well, that that patients may not require an ACL reconstruction. Of course, some patients can have an ACL tear at the same time, they can have a petlar instability, which you have to be carefully evaluate that patient is suffering from petlar instability or ACL, then we have to address that, that uh, particular uh, problem. So why should you do a ACL reconstruction? I think the most common question is whether does a, why should we operate on ACL? Why can't we treat conservatively these patients? We know that by operating ACL reconstruction, we cannot prevent osteoarthritis. We know that literature has shown that, that uh, if we, even if we don't treat ACL, that, that patient, many patients, don't, they don't uh, get osteoarthritis, then why should we operate? But by experience and with the literature support, we know that once the younger, especially in younger patients, that because of the recurrent instability, even though the first time you have only ACL, but because of the recurrent instability, they can come back with the meniscus and cartilage damage that eventually they're resulting in secondary osteoarthritis. So can, these are the main important factor why we have to pay, operate on ACL reconstruction, especially in younger patients, high active patients, and have an absolute uh, and they have an instability. It is important that this patient has to be reconstructed and stabilize the knee because that is the most important ligament to stabilize it. Of course, whenever you want to do an ACL reconstruction, you had to be equipped with all the implants and the equipments to treat meniscal injuries and cartilage injuries, including the repairing techniques for both meniscus and cartilage. Because many patients, you may come across that sometimes MRI may be deceiving because sometimes the MRI reports may not be good. Sometimes the MRI quality may not be good. So it is important that you should be sub sometimes surprised that see a meniscal tear or a cartilage injury inside, we cannot come out like that. So you have to be equipped with the meniscal injuries uh, uh, treatment, including the repairing techniques. So when you do an ACL reconstruction, we are aiming for an anatomical ACL reconstruction. Why? Because we know that non-anatomical ACL graft treatment is the one of the most common technical error leading to recurrent instability following ACL reconstruction. Previously, I've explained when I was operating in a 2005 to 10, we used to operate through the transtibial technique. But we know that even that patients had a very good results. However, we know that that is basically reconstructing only the anteromedial bundle that may not control the rotational stability. So now we move on to the transportal technique, which is very important to get an anatomical placement, which gives the lawyer in the notch, your entry point, it makes more horizontal tunnel. And also it is covering the postural lateral bundle. That means you have a better rotational control in the, tra in the transportal technique rather than the transtibial technique. When you want to do a transportal technique, you can you do with just two portal technique. One is the high anterolateral and the far medial portal like this. I do only with the two portal technique. But if you want to visualize through the medial side, then you make a high anteromedial technique. So the both are okay. If you are uh, using a three portal technique, that is also very good enough because you can visualize your tunnel through the anteromedial, uh, high anteromedial portal and you work through the low far anteromedial portal for your entry point. 
and you know this slide very well with many times it was used you know that how it is made when you make a far medial portal you will make a more horizontal tunnel if you make it more close that is anteromedial portal if it is close to the patella tendon then you will you will make a more vertical portal that will be slight oblique and this will be more circular and horizontal however this will be resulting in a shortening of the tunnel this will give you more length so in the revision situations even i tend to use close to that so that you will get a larger tunnel but in a regular primary situation if you are using this far medial technique that will give you the good circular tunnel and it will uh, give you around 3.5 3 to uh, i mean 3.5 to 4 cm length of the femoral tunnel so where before you do do the graft harvesting make sure that you do a diagnostic round because uh, yeah, i mean that's, that is, that will then you know that whether any meniscal injury any loose bodies any cartilage injuries you come through the lateral gutter go up to the popliteus uh, fossa <clears throat> examine the popliteus groove to, to look for any loose bodies then you come back to the supra um, supra patella femoral uh, uh, compartment then you go on to the medial side slide around then see the medial gutter still you can see the periphery of the medial meniscus on the medial gutter then slide your scope to the notch then you examine for your acl once you come to the acl side then you do the medial and the lateral side the medial side you open up and look for the probe it probe the medial meniscus because many times the meniscal tear if you probe it you can find it up you make sure that your body is okay your root is okay and then go on to the figure of fourth position examine the lateral side again probe it and make sure that your lateral meniscus is um, uh, okay once you examine then you do the graft harvesting so that is very very important once you have done that all the examination look for the chronic uh, especially root tear in chronic cases because there is a possibility that sometimes when you have a tight knee you may miss a root tear sometimes if you are not uh, uh, diagnosed you are root tear it is important in a chronic patients with multiple instabilities that can have a root tear at the also at the same time you also look for the ramp lesions which uh, uh, which you do it uh, routine examination because in chronic or in acute situations if there is an unstable ramp lesion that has to be Uh, repaired we know that mechanical studies have shown that if you don't repair the unstable ramp lesions that can cause more anterior translation put a lot of strain on your acl graft can result in failure so once you come to the preparation once you harvested your graft then come and prepare your notch the notch preparation you don't spend too much time however if there are if you are starting your practice are you starting your uh, acl reconstruction you are in the early you are in the early part of your career you clear the notch make sure that you make that uh, footprint is visible of course the remnant preservation is ideal but when you are in a early stage don't compromise your entry point so you make to may make sure that you clear the all the soft tissues and and uh, find it out your entry point properly so in chronic cases you may not have any footprint over there so i think it's ramakant already had shown that this is the anteromedial bundle this is a posterolateral bundle this is the lateral ridge and this is a bifurcate ridge but when you make an anatomical tunnel when you make a center of the both the tunnels you don't come too low and anterior the chance of failure of the graft is very high so we try to make more on this level rather than this level even though this concept was uh, very famous in the last i mean the 10 years 5 10 years before when the freddy fu all uh, popularized this uh, anatomical reconstruction we tend to come too low but now we know that if we come too low the notch the your tunnel comes so anterior the chance of failure is very high and should not be too low like this also this is another technique that will help you to enter your uh, uh, mark like that you now you can measure the entire length of the notch 40 to 50% from your posterior aspect of uh, your measurement will be then your entry point again this mark is too low so you have to make at least this level but you make it at least 40% don't come to 50% you will be very anterior and low you can use a free hand technique like this you can use all make an entry point first that is an uh, that is also a very easy method uh uh then you can use your uh uh guide wire to enter it so that is the anteromedial bundle that is the posterolateral bundle but when you make a center the center will come almost here so that we are not aiming we are aiming more on the anteromedial bundle so, and it also covers part of your posterolateral bundle 
So another technique is you can use an offset guide. The thing wrong in using offset guide, still there's a transportal guides are available in the market. So that gives a 5 mm, 7 mm offset. If the notch is too wide, then you can use a 7 mm offset. Or the 5 mm offset is very good and good enough to have a entry point. You can see this is going almost in the, you may look uh, over the resident ridge level. So that means that covers most of the antro medial bundle and also it will cover the part of the antro, uh, sorry, postolateral uh, bundle. So you may look like looks a little bit more higher when you, when you make an entry point. Once you made the tunnel with the reamer, I will come to the uh, point again. So once you do a femur reaming through the far anteromedial portal, make sure that you are visualizing your medial femoral condyle. You don't damage your femoral condyle. So slowly you push, uh, you, you push the reamer by hand, not by reaming with the handgun. Then you just slowly come through the uh, uh, joint without reaming. That is very important because the possibility that you can damage the uh, femoral condyle over there. Then you start reaming your desired length of the tunnel, which is already discussed by previous talk. Once you've done the dreaming, you can see this is the tunnel what you make. So you made it, that entry point was looking a bit higher, but if you can see that, that is the still, you can see the footprint of your both anteromedial and postolateral bundle. So it's still that is good enough to make that uh, tunnel. If you have if you come too low, then it comes very anteriorly, the chance of failure is very high. Here you have enough posterior rim, that is the anatomical point, which is which was visualized through the anteromedial portal. Tibial side, we no need to worry because always you will have some stump. You see the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, you see that that is the posterior border, that is the anterior border. So 70 to 75% of your stump covers on the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Just go corresponding to that make an entry point in the center of your footprint. So here we don't measure much over there. There are more commercially available jigs available. So this is the flat jig, which is available over. You can just keep it over the footprint, but even if make a, uh, there is a big oval opening over there, but the, your entry point is not here. You can see there is a marking over here. So your aim is here, not over here. So you can see that this is the entry point of the lateral meniscus. That means your entry point is going to be here. So that is going to be your center of your footprint. So that is the entry point for the tibial side. Then you do the gradual reaming. You do the 4.5 reamer first because sometimes you even make a slight mistake in the entry point. You can adjust after doing the 4.5 by reamer. Uh, this is the uh, 4.5 reamer. Once you have done that, you can use a guide pin again in the 4.5 mm tunnel. Then you can adjust. We can push it on anterior side or a uh, um, a posterior side, and then you can gradually remit to the desired place where you want. Yes, already we discussed minimum size is 8 mm, which you require. So you have to make sure that 5 strands or 6 strands are used. And once you've done that, then you pull the graft on the uh, femoral side. When you are using these, this is the adjustable, adjustable loop fixation. Uh, fixation you, that means you are pulling all the threads together. The blue thread is the only hold, holding the button. White is holding the graft. Once you pull the, all the graft, the button goes out of the cortex and flips on its own. That is a mark which you can see that confirmed that it has gone and flipped. Then you pull the white loop, then it pulls the graft inside. So that is the mark which you already drilled for 20 mm of socket. Then you know that once it uh, reaches the end of the socket, you do the tightening. Yes, Ramagan said there is a possibility that you can get lengthened if you want. If you are not sure enough, you can do some knots to prevent that slippage over here. Again, to, for some technical tips, make sure that your point of your, this is the measured tunnel length, make sure that is that is in the apex of your tunnel. If it is goes inside, that, that is a worry, worrying part, that means you are not correct. Once you see this point, that means the cortex, then you pull it, if it doesn't come, that means it is flipped. You can also confirm by changing the scope through the anteromedial portal. And you can sometimes see the button which is sitting horizontally over there. Or you can reach the lateral gutter and you can see the button. Because the, one of the other possibility is that pulling of the graft excessively, it can come out of the tensor fascia later, or sometimes even it can come out of the skin like this. Of course, this is a bit obvious. Sometimes when it comes to the tensor fascia later, you may miss it, then chance possibly that graft can get laxity later then. You see that this, once you see the mark, which is not in the apex of the tunnel, that means it is 
out of the tensor fascia later. And also when you pull it, it will have a soft bungee effect from the tensor fascia later, it comes to the lateral cortex and again it bumps up. So that means it is go over the tensor fascia later, then you make a small incision over the uh, outer uh, that uh, uh, exit point, you just open the tensor fascia later, or you do a multiple cycling, it can go inside very easily. So it is important that you do these tricks to bring that tensor fascia later, uh, I mean the button to bring out of the tensor fascia later and to the lateral femoral cortex. As I told, uh, sometimes you can do excessive reaming of the socket if you are, uh, uh, but still you can adjust your, uh, you can, you can uh, correct it by doing, uh, pulling the correct length of the socket which you measured, then you can do the counter pull and tighten the knot over there without worrying about the uh, graft tunnel mismatch. So pull the graft and stop once the mark in the graft reaches, then the entry of the femoral socket, then you tighten the loop then that means that you don't uh, pull the excessive graft inside the tunnel. The tibial side fixation, usually this, uh, what we can do is you can even still, still you can adjust your graft uh, positioning in the tibial side by using the screw, uh, inserting the screw, whether the posterior, anterior or medial or lateral. So if you think that your graft is too far medial, then you put the screw on the lateral side, push the graft, I mean, push, on the, push the graft on the screw on the medial side, that, that will pull at least one or two mm to the lateral side. If you think it's a two anterior, then use your screw anterior to the graft that can push your graft to slightly posterior. So it can be uh, adjusted in on all the directions by uh, using that screws on uh, uh, all the sides. And always I use this all to see the integrity of your graft, I mean, how much tightening is there. Usually we use one size more because we use mostly bio-observable screws. If this, if it is snugly fitting, still then you can use the same size screws, bio-screws over there. So this is here, we are using one size more uh, screw, which is commonly used for the TBL side. So make sure that your another hand is holding the graft very tightly in 30 degrees of flexion. So I just I take two slides for the PTP graph is everything tunnel, your transportal technique, everything's absolutely same. You don't need to change anything in your technique. Um, the only thing is the femoral side, make sure that you get only 1.5 to 2 centimeter graft. Otherwise, sometimes it will become a problem. So the generally we use for the high demand young patients, sports patients, where you want the patient wants to go back because it's a bone to bone healing. So here, this is the passage of the graph. Sometimes you can use a probe because sometimes the graft comes and stuck up here. So you can use a probe from the anteromedial portal and lever it over there. So here it goes very easily. You can see that it goes and snugly fitting over there. When you advantage of another uh, advantage of PPT graft, you can use a metal screws that has a more a strong fixation than your bio screws. So your cost wise again, still it's a bit cheaper. Um, that is the femoral fixation here. If you want to use the bio screw, then you have to make a small notch here. The, the notch is very, very important because the entry point, uh, you need a, some point of the thread should go inside. Otherwise, the chance of breakage of your bio screw is very high. You use this kind of uh, notch, notcher, then you use a tap that is also must for your bio screw. Otherwise, the, the bone is very sclerosed and strong, the possibility that screw can uh, break. So this is the notcher and the tapping is very important for your uh, bio screw when you use a PPT graph. But if you're using a metal screw, it doesn't matter. So that is the final uh, graph fixation of your PTP graph. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.